Welcome back to Off-Label Veterinary News, your source for commentary on animals, medicine, and practice life. If this is your first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's jump in to some of the stories you might have missed. Our first story comes to us from the College of Veterinary Medicine in Seoul, Korea, and it evaluated whether or not the personality traits of clone dogs were identical to the original. The study evaluated six cloned dogs and four controlled puppies and evaluated behavioral traits such as pack drive, prey drive, and fight or flight responses. The clone puppies had highly consistent responses when it came to pack drive and fight or flight responses, while the control group were not consistent. Prey drive was inconsistent in both cloned and control puppies. What's important about this study is that some personality traits seem to be preserved genetically. In this case, they were looking at pack drive and fight or flight responses. Now, before you conjure up images of a clone army, be aware that this is a very small study out of a controversial lab in South Korea. What impact do you think this type of research will have on the future of cloning animals and humans? Our next study comes to us from well, all over the United States. Emergency veterinarian Rob Pope has been on a quest to run all over the United States for the past year and a half or so. Rob initially started this journey to follow in the footsteps of the famous Forrest Gump running from Alabama to California. Now, Rob did begin in Alabama. He did end up in California, but unlike Forrest Gump, he just kept on running and 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 he's still running today. In fact, Rob just passed the 20,000 kilometer mark recently. That is equivalent to running from the North Pole all the way to the South Pole along the Prime Meridian. He is the first person ever to run across the United States three times in one year. Rob is doing this for charity, so I encourage you to check him out, follow, and support him at Run Rob La Run and on Instagram. What do you think, off-labelers? Could you run across the United States three times in one year? Would you want to? Researchers in France set out to determine if owner interactions with their dog during examination would reduce stress. Now, most of us already know that it would, but they set out to quantify and qualify that statement. These researchers took 33 dogs in a randomized crossover. So that means that during one exam, they were petted by the owner, the other they were not. And of course they crossed over. They wanted to find out if A, dogs learned from a good or bad experience the first time, if that would help, and B, what impact physical interaction had on the dog's stress level. To be clear, all of the dogs showed a stressed response at the veterinarian's office. But what these researchers wanted to find out was how could we reduce that stress to as low a level as possible. So basically, they petted the dog, measured their heart rate, cortisol levels, different things like that, and then not. Obviously, there was a big difference in the two. If you allow the owners to interact, as we always say in our clinics, make sure to involve the client during the exam. Don't just allow them to sit there in the chair passively. Have them get up, listen, put their hands on the dog, feel during the physical exam, whatever you can do to have them participate. That not only engages them in the physical examination, but also allows the dog to be less stressed. Another interesting finding was it did not matter if the dogs were petted first or ignored first as far as reducing their stress. So that means we have the opportunity to reduce their stress. Every exam is a new exam for my dog patients. So off-labelers, what do you think? What are you doing to reduce stress in our pet patients? Do you ask the client to be involved during the exam? Do you allow them to pet or hold or in some way interact physically with your dog? Check out this research and I wanna hear from you. Our final study comes to us from an alleged university called Vanderbilt, uh, where some researcher there claims that dogs are smarter than cats because dogs have more than twice the number of neurons than cats. Kind of an interesting story if you're a dog lover, but if you love cats as much as dogs, or maybe more than dogs, because we all know that cats are smarter, uh, then you may take issue with this study. Basically what they did was measure the neurons and they found that cats were at the bottom of their list and they found that dogs had more than twice the number of neurons than cats, indicating they were smarter. I reached out to several expert felines to get their opinion on this research. And one of them was quick to point out that the study cited the 
animal found to have the highest number of neurons was a golden retriever, indicating the research was flawed and only apparently looked at food motivation. Another expert feline pointed out quickly that they were only measuring neurons, not intelligence, because of course they have superpowers. How do you measure that? Yeah, take that Vanderbilt, measure a cat's superpowers. Wait, yeah, where's that, where's that stay? I wanna see that. That's what the expert feline said. Well, that's it for another edition of Off-Label Veterinary News. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and ding the bell so you'll be notified when content like this drops on your internet doorsteps. Until next time, Keep living that off-label life. Bye.